Hello there, students, and welcome to another video. This one on the Articles of Confederation, America's first government that no one wants to talk about because it was that bad. It was awful. You know, our government today, everyone talks about how great our country is and how great the Constitution is, but our first attempt at government was an epic failure. Let me tell you why. So, first of all, the Articles of Confederation is the name of our first government that we had after the Revolutionary War. And we decided eventually that this government did not work, and we replaced it with a new government that we live under today. Most people don't know that we actually had a government before the Constitution. They just kind of thought that was our first attempt. But no, that is not true. You can amaze your friends and family with that little trivia nugget. Now, moving on. A vocab alert. See here? It's in bold with exclamation points. Um, a big important word is the word confederation. A confederation is an alliance of independent states. This is a style of government. We do not have a confederation today. Um, basically, in a confederate style government, each state is the supreme power, and the confederation is just an alliance between those states that they're going to work together, and there's some power that it has, but for the most part, the states are more powerful than the national government. So think of it, if we had a confederation today, the state of Connecticut would be more powerful than the Washington, D.C. government. So it's a little bit backwards of what we're used to. One example of that is the United Nations. It's kind of like a confederation because there's all these different countries that group together and work on problems, but each country is still in charge of its people and not the United Nations. Okay, moving on. So the Articles of Confederation was set up in a little bit of a different way. It had only one branch of government, just a legislative branch that made laws uh, versus our three-branch government that we have today. In their legislative branch, they only had one house in their Congress. Today we have two houses in our Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives. They only had one. So you can see the Confederate government is much, much smaller. Each state gets one vote. So Rhode Island, that had little tiny Rhode Island, had an equal say to big old Virginia back then. So that's a little weird. Um, Two-thirds vote was required, so more than majority to pass any laws. And you saw in Mrs. Vibber Johnson's presentation for earlier this week that the colonial regions were very different, so getting two-thirds of the states to agree on anything would probably be very hard. And even harder would be is if you wanted to change the government in any way, add something to it, which is an amendment, or change something, it required a unanimous vote. And you could probably picture that with the regions as different as they are, well, they would never all be unanimous. This confederation, like I said, in a confederation, the states have most of the, of the powers, the jobs, but the Articles of Confederation did have some jobs, and these are what they were. The Articles of Confederation could declare war, they could make treaties, they got to deal with the Native American problems and Indian affairs, they were able to have an army and a navy, they were able to coin, which meant to print, or borrow money. They could not tax the people, which was a big problem. They had the ever-important job of regulating weights and measures, which meant deciding like what kind of system of weights and measures we'd use, and they ran the post office. So you can see their jobs are pretty insignificant compared to the kind of jobs our government has today. Um, the state governments under the Articles of Confederation were actually way more powerful. They were written earlier, so the states wrote their governments during the Revolutionary War before the Articles was written. So the state government was more powerful. The state governments had three branches of government. They were the ones that set the voting regulations. State governments had Bill of Rights that protected their citizens' rights. And each state was its own sovereign power that, that complete control over their people, and only states had the power or the job to tax the people. So if you lived in Connecticut, Connecticut could tax you, but not Washington, D.C. And the state government also had the very important power of regulating trade, which meant that they could set the trade rules um, that went on within that state. So if you think about these two pictures, see here Governor Malloy from Connecticut, see why I have him bigger than President Obama, because in a confederation, the states would be more powerful than the national government. So, this government was started in 1781, and as you can imagine, without the power to tax, the Confederacy slowly went broke. They had no way to get money to do anything. States printed their own money because they were more powerful, and national money that was printed was worthless because it didn't have any money to back it up. So, this caused something called inflation, which meant that money was worthless. So, you can see this guy here. This is what the national government looked like under the Articles of Confederation. Other countries like England, France, and Spain looked at our way of government and they saw us as very, very weak and they were waiting for our confederation to fall apart and they were threatening 
kind of like looming in the distance to, to have some war against us. I'm so broke, I can't even pay attention. Um, I'm not sure if the Articles of Confederation paid attention or not, but I like that picture. Okay, more problems with the Articles. In addition to other countries looming in the distance to take us over, um, what was happening was states were taxing each other on imports and exports because they could regulate trade. So if someone from Massachusetts wanted to sell potatoes to people in Connecticut, well, Connecticut put a tax on that. And it was basically a disaster because every state worked as its own country. They weren't working together. And it was very hard to do any business. In addition to war between other countries, there was actually possible war between states. There were these things called tariff wars. As states were taxing each other, they were threatening each other with war between each other. So our confederation was literally falling apart. And with no authority to really help settle disputes between states, there were boundary disputes, which meant that one state thought land was theirs, another state thought that land was theirs, and they fight over it. So our states kind of were acting like these two extremely cute kittens trying to fight each other. All right, so the bottom line. So after all that information, let's recap. No taxation, no money for the government. Simple as that. Because the government couldn't print their own money, there was inflation due to a lack of gold and silver-based currency, and state monies were worth more, so government money was worth less. You see here, here's the Young Nation, Articles of Confederation, he's, wearing, he's got crutches because he's hurting, and here's his pile of useless money. Tariffs between states meant that there was no regulation of trade or commerce, commerce, states were taxing each other on everything, and it was causing business people to really lose money because doing business between states was a complete and utter disaster. This caused hostility between the states. Would there be war? Could Connecticut and Massachusetts go to war with each other? That would have been crazy. Imagine that. And finally, disrespect from other countries was happening. Okay, finally, we're going to learn about this a little bit more in the next video. There was a big, big important thing that happened in 1787 um, called Shays' Rebellion. The Confederation was obviously a social contract that was not working. Rights were being violated. Because people were going into debt and the states weren't helping people and the government wasn't helping people, Farmers in Massachusetts were being put in jail because they couldn't pay their bills. People did not feel safe. States were threatening war with each other. In Massachusetts, farmers finally rebelled against the government. They took up their pitchforks and their guns, like you see in this picture here, and they marched on the government to try and stop the government so they'd stop getting put in jail. This was a huge rebellion. It lasted for several months. And people were like, oh my god, this is awful. The people of our country are fighting against the government. We need to do something fast. The rebellion was an eye-opener that the social contract needed to change. A new government was needed. So what ends up happening is um, we end up looking at starting a new government eventually, which will be a future topic. But in conclusion, the Art Articles of Confederation was America's first attempt at national government. And as I told you, it was an epic failure. Um, it made everything a complete disaster. The government was very weak. It had limited powers, and the states had most of the powers. Because the states had most of the powers, there was no one to settle disputes amongst them. The Articles of Confederation could not tax or regulate trade between states. The government was broke, and lots of problems were happening in the country. Like I said, taxes between the states, possible war between the states, and people suffering because of the lack of government. And then finally, Shays' Rebellion was the eye-opener that this government was not working, and that something needed to change.